Hey guys, welcome back to Stuff Steve Likes, and I'm Steve, and this is the channel where I talk about stuff that I like. I like watches, I like knives, music gear, EDC stuff, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, I um, just wanted to do a quick video of my uh, new G-Shock here. This is a Mudmaster GG1000, and um, it's part of their Mudmaster series, meaning that these are mud resistant. So you know, if you're, uh, you know, working in the dirt a lot, construction worker, uh, oil rig worker, anything like that, like these are really um, just super resistant to any kind of uh, foreign particles getting in the watch case. So um, it's a huge watch. Um, you know, it's one of their kind of, um, uh, I guess a lot of G-Shocks are oversized, but this is among the largest that they make. And uh, just a really, really cool looking watch. I think it, I think it almost looks like kind of like a, kind of like a knobby off-road tire or something like that. But this has a really cool look to it, very unique look. Um, I've seen a bunch of copies of these, you know, for super cheap on uh, eBay and Amazon and stuff. But um, I would say definitely, you know, save up and get the real deal. Because um, you're not just buying the the uh, look you're buying the the G-Shock uh, toughness and um, one thing I always respect about Casio is that they um, they really do put as much you know effort into their designs as possible you know to make sure they're unique to make sure that they're um, to make sure that they're uh, you know not copying anybody um, I just think they have super uh, original designs and have always respected that about Casio but anyway if you hear some scraping around in the back that is my dog Winslow my puppy Winslow and um, he just got uh, quote unquote fixed the other day and has a cone <laughs> the cone of shame so uh, if you hear something scraping around that's just him don't worry about it he'll be okay in a couple of weeks anyway all right so let's look at the watch here um, basically you have the analog hands here and you have two LCDs. You have one that shows uh, the day of the week, and then up here we have uh, we have the uh, digital time. And if you press this button here, then it goes to uh, the month and day. Okay, that toggles between that, and then this one here toggles to the temperature. And uh, that's one of the sensors on this is the thermometer. So you've got a thermometer and compass. It's a twin sensor. Uh, my range man is triple sensor, so that has the thermometer, the compass, and then that one also has the barometer, um, which also powers an altimeter. So, um, so this is a twin sensor. And this is the twin sensor battery version. There is a solar, a tough solar atomic version of this that has triple sensor. Those are way more expensive. Um, uh, very, very beautiful watches. Those are the GWG 1000s. Um, but you got to have a little bit deeper pockets for that one. Maybe I'll get one at some point, but this one is definitely kind of scratching that itch at the moment. Uh, so there's your, uh, there's your functions on the home screen there. And um, this is your... Uh, this is your little wheel that shows the function, so we're at time right now. There is your uh, world time there, so that shows second time zone, so if you're traveling or something, it's nice to have that. Uh, you've got stopwatch there, so you, know, you can just kind of start, stop, reset, you know, kind of your standard stopwatch. Here's your timer. Um, it's a 60-minute timer, so if you want to time something, you can uh, you can set it to time. And the alarm goes off, basically just like your kitchen timer, whatever you want to say. And, um, of course, you hold this in if you want to change it. You can do it from 1 minute to 60 minutes. All right. Uh, and this is your alarm, and you have five alarms. So you have alarm 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is a snooze alarm, and then your signal, which is your hourly beep. So, and then back to alarm 1. So lots of different alarms, which is cool and then back to home time. Uh, if you want to activate the compass feature, you push this. This is your, uh, kind of your uh, compass button here. And uh, wait for it to find north. And uh, north is uh, shooting off to this side, which is correct. So that is calibrated properly. And to go out of there, you go here. All right, a momentary interruption there, it's okay. 
Anyway, um, so yeah, so that's the compass feature. If you want to reset the compass, uh, you just uh, you just uh, push this again, and I believe the compass stays on for I think on this one it's like 20 seconds, and then it'll reset. And then if you want to go back to regular time, you go back here. The second hand whips around, the wheel goes back to time, and there you go. I'll show you the back here. So there's your back. So there's, you know, shock resist, all your normal stuff, shock, shock absor absorbing structure. There's your module number, so 5476. And there's some great videos on this out there. So if you just type in Casio 5476, they go over all the functions and so forth. And it actually, this watch does quite a bit. It's pretty cool. Um, the one I really recommend is Watch Geek. Um, he makes incredible instructional videos on, on uh, these Casio G-Shocks. Really great videos. And um, so I would definitely not even attempt to do videos as well as he does as far as the functions and so forth. But GG1000, all that, Japan movement, cased in Thailand, all that. And let me just show you this. Like, this is a really tall watch, but look at this, look at this band and how it, uh, it comes down like this. And it just hugs the wrist. Like, it's a huge watch, but it's so comfortable. Um, I think really anybody can wear this watch. I think if you have like a seven inch wrist or a little bit more, you can wear this watch. Um, and I'll give you a wrist shot here in a second. Um, really nice strap, very, very comfortable. And uh, this thing's pretty light too. I mean, it, it feels significant, but, um, but it's not too, too heavy. Um, got the uh, kind of the uh, doubled up uh, strap retainer there. And you can see how the strap has this really kind of nice, uh, I would call it a, like a herringbone pattern to it. And uh, just um, just really cool look to that. And very comfortable. And this one has the, uh, the not the metal retainer, but the resin retainer. Um, and I, I don't think that's a downside to this. I, I like the resin retainer. I think it actually grips better than the metal retainer. I've got a metal retainer on my range, man, but that one, if it didn't have its little, it's got a little grip deal here. If that didn't have that, it would slip off the end. So these resin retainers, I think, retain a little bit better. Of course, long-term durability, not as good, but I think these are pretty cheap um, if you ever need to replace it. So that's the strap. And I'll just give you a close-up of this. Try to get it without getting too much reflection. Oh, got a notification. Forgive the noise there, but this is an up close. And the fakes out there of these, see how this function wheel um, has the uh, has this little kind of surround on it that's raised? Um, the fake ones that I've seen are all flat. So really be looking for that. Um, the other thing that I've seen on the fakes is, see how cut this is? See how nice and textured it is? The fakes are very, um, it looks like almost somebody ran some sandpaper across it. So um, I said across it, sorry, across it uh, and, and smoothed it out. It's not as cut, it's not as defined. And then of course, lastly, always to check if you have a real G-Shock, push this button, this button, and this button together. If I can do it at the same time, on the home screen, yeah, I can't do it today. There we go. And there are your test screens. So there's test screen one, test screen two, and on test screens two, the second sand will go up to the 12. So we'll be looking for that. Test screen three, test screen four, five, six. So it should have six test screens. Um, so make sure that if you buy one of these used, you do check the test screens to make sure they match up to what mine were. Anyway, um, but just a really cool dial. Just a very interesting watch. It's a good conversation starter. And um, yeah, just a, just a really cool piece. This thing just looks tough. It exudes toughness. And um, according to all their testing and everything, this thing is um, is pretty much bulletproof. I've, I think I even saw a video. They ran over one of these with a like a tractor or something like that, something crazy. I don't know, they're always trying to do something something crazy to test their watches, but just great buttons on it. These are metal buttons and they have this knurling, they're real grippy and uh, just, just an extremely well done watch. And uh, it's got the Allen keys here instead of the Phillips. Just some really nice touches on this. 
Here, I'll put it on the wrist and give you a wrist shot. Now, an up-close wrist shot of this looks crazy, like it's way too big. But honestly, from a distance, um, it's not too bad. And even, even there, you can see how that strap really hugs the wrist. So I don't think there's any, uh, any issues with, with fitting this. I think it's got um, just great wrist presence. Um, it commands uh, looks, you know. People are, are like, holy cow, that's a crazy looking watch. That's a cool watch. That's a huge watch, whatever it is. I mean, it definitely has that, has that look, but, but fits very nicely. And just the way that those, uh, you know, th that these come down, these, I guess I call them lugs, the way that these lugs go down like that. And also, again, you have those little bumpers in here. Um, it, it just totally hugs the wrist. Really, really nice. Okay. So there's the wrist shot. I'll give you my final thoughts on it. Uh, these retail for about 320 Now that's going to be at like a jewelry store, you know, retailer, so forth. Um, but I have seen them online for less. And uh, I'll give you a little bit more of a side shot there. Um, I've seen them for less uh, on Amazon. They're usually hover, hovering around 200 bucks, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. I got this one used um, for $130 with box, papers, everything. Incredible deal. If you can get this for... You know, I would say 100 to 140 dollars used, or around the 200 dollars new. Then you're good to go. Um, it's even, I think, it's even worth the the retail. But knowing that you can get them online for less, I would definitely do that. Um, if you have a local retailer that you really like and respect, um, you know, take them that price and say, hey, could you match it? Could you get any closer? You know, I definitely like to support local businesses and everything, but you know, if it's a difference of 120 bucks, I'm gonna buy online. So, uh, but some places will match prices, so no guarantees, but just just try it. Um, anyway, and um, always make sure that you know what you're looking for, and that you go through an authorized dealer if you don't to make sure that you're getting a genuine piece. And again, you know, look at the things, look at the strap, the way that it's cut. Um, always look at your test screens, look at that little function wheel to make sure it has the, um, the right texture to it. And more than anything, um, check the functions. Just make sure the compass is actually working, make sure it has all the screens that it needs and so forth. And if it sh seems shady, you know, a Craigslist deal or something, just walk away from it. There's tons of these out there that you can get. Um, so uh, anyway, that's my uh, that's my, my review of the GG1000. I hope you guys found it informative. And the, again, this is stuff, stuff Steve likes. Uh, go ahead and subscribe and, uh, you know, comment down below if you have any, uh, have any suggestions. And thanks a lot, and we'll see you on the next one.